Hi, and welcome to this series called The History of Fan Anime in North America. I'm your host, William Chow, and I'm going to go over uh, the history of how Japanese animation came over here into North America and became uh, the genre and the entity as you now know it today. Because obviously when it first began, you know, um, you know, the, the genre of Japanese animation had a, a, a totally different connotation, a totally different sort of fan base, and even a totally different way that uh, the fans of, uh, of anime uh, had to go through and do things in order to even just enjoy uh, this genre, okay? So uh, this series that I've, uh, I've put together is more of a, of a documentary type of series because uh, um, not a lot of this information is available on the internet and really the only people that can really give a good accurate description of, of the things that happened in, during this era um, are the people who actually had to go through, the anime fans who actually went through and actually did a lot of the, 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 the work, the fan subbing, um, you know, the distribution and, and all the tape trading and that kind of stuff uh, that was in that era, okay? So, um, you know, in this series, uh, I'm going to be going over a, a multitude of different topics and the different uh, events and things uh, that happened in this time period. I'm also going to bring out a lot of, uh, of uh, memorabilia and things like that and go over the, some of the stories and some of the history behind some of this uh, memorabilia because again, in the modern era, a lot of this stuff is not, uh, is not viewed the same way. Uh, we don't have a lot of the same things anymore. So uh, I want to go over some of that stuff. Uh, again, in this era, um, you know, we, you know, the, the media that we use is also different because nowadays everything is digital. We can download things off of the internet and whatnot. Um, back in the, uh, you know, in, in the early days of anime, you know, the internet wasn't as fast as it was. The computers aren't as fast as it was. The operating systems aren't the way they were. So we had to use a lot of, uh, you know, like actual physical media, things like video cassette tapes, um, you know, uh, laser discs. Uh, music all you know came on CDs and things like that. So we're going to get into a lot of that kind of stuff um, uh, in this series. Okay, uh, obviously the, the technology is going to be a lot, a lot different. You know, we're always used to you know watching this on YouTube right now. You can Google things very easily and find things. Uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, uh, websites available to, to sell and buy things, eBay and Amazon and, and all these uh, commercial companies. But again, at this time when the anime started. Okay, you know, it was all, it was, you know, the internet was not the same as, as, as we know it today. You know, email is not the same as today. There is no things like Google. There are no, you know, BitTorrent sites. There, are, there was no streaming sites like YouTube or Crunchyroll or anything like that. We don't have the same multimedia uh, sites like uh, Facebook or Twitter or anything. So again, finding information, getting information, talking about different types of anime uh, is very difficult. Even finding the anime is going to be very difficult. So. Well, I'm going to go over and, and, and cover what we did uh, to get around, uh, you know, and, and actually try to get communications. You know, again, email is not the same, and the people who had access to the internet are not the same. So, you know, we, you know we, well, I'm going to get into uh, how we had to use, uh, you know, the regular mail system, like you know, U.S. Post and Canada Post, for example, on how we, you know, communicated using that. Okay. Another topic that I'm going to cover in these various episodes is uh, some of the influences. Uh, that we've had uh, in the North American culture that influenced uh, Japanese animation, okay? And I get into th this because, um, you know, obviously different people from different uh, uh, parts of the world uh, get their influences from anime in, in slight different ways, obviously. Um, obviously people in like, you know, Mexico, uh, you know, Brazil and that kind of stuff will get the slight different influ influences from people who are in, let's say, the Philippines, Malaysia, and again, you know, some more different influences uh, and different titles would come from, let's say, France and whatnot. So uh, here in Canada, in you know, especially in Vancouver, I'm going to go over influences uh, uh, that uh, affected anime. Uh, things like uh, Canto Pop, uh, the Taiwan influence from things like uh, you know, the, the Song Mei Records and that kind of stuff. Um, things like Dungeons and Dragons, you know, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, the, the, the playing uh, and, and of course the uh, role playing games and that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm going to refer to as a, one episode. I'm going to talk about uh, the influences caused by fobs, or you know, as we refer, as you refer to them as fresh off the boats. Okay, 
Um, so again, I'm going to cover episodes on how uh, they all inter- uh, influence uh, some of the animes uh, that uh, that we get over here. Okay. Other topics I'm going to cover in, in the in the series is going to be uh, how uh, the fans participate with anime. Okay. So I know, like uh, you know, a lot of you people are familiar with things like you know, cosplay. Uh, some fans like to participate uh, with Japanese animation by drawing a, a lot of their own animation. So, you know, so they'll appear in uh, anime conventions in, in artist alleys. They'll maybe draw their own doujinshi, um, you know, print their own, uh, you know, drawings or, 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 or artwork, for example. Um, so we'll cover a little bit of that. Uh, I'll also cover uh, the other uh, fan interest, uh, the things that people do, uh, things like uh, karaoke. And of course, uh, you know, uh, we also play a lot of uh, video games and that kind of stuff. So I'll cover uh, uh, some of the video games I'm playing and uh, and go over things uh, that, that, that uh, I've done in the video game. Uh, that's uh, a little bit different than what maybe a lot of other people will, will do. For example, some of the things I do for uh, when I'm playing, uh, let's say, Pokemon Go, uh, the, the, the King of Fighters, of course, Line Grisa, one of my, my favorite classic uh, titles. Um, again, we'll cover that in, that in this series as well. Another thing I'm going to cover is a lot of the uh, organizations and and the fan clubs and the and the and, and the different um, uh, groups that are that, that that came about to basically try to to try to communicate the message of anime out to uh, more people because again uh, you know things like social media doesn't exist at this time so how do you get the word out that there's this thing called anime? Uh, out there to, to to fans who might be interested or might be uh, looking for this kind of uh, uh, you know this kind of uh, you know animation, but just don't know where to find it. So we're going to talk about uh, VJAS, which is the Vancouver Japanese Animation Society. Uh, there's a, so another larger uh, group called the CFO, the Cartoon Fantasy Organization. I'll, go, I'll cover that as well. Um, a lot of the clubs. Uh, at this time, uh, you know, came from uh, the universities, uh, and the reason is because th- they also had the best connection to the internet at this time. So uh, I'm going to cover a little bit of, of some of the stories from the uh, University of British Columbia and uh, and SFU, it's the Simon Fraser University that happened in this sort of neighborhood. But again, uh, it, it, this uh, this idea also happens in many uh, universities across the the nation um, at this particular time. Uh, one, the other thing that, uh, that also uh, transpired is a lot of uh, fan subbing groups um, basically are, are who, that came up uh, trying to translate and put subtitles on these animations so that other people can uh, understand them okay uh, you digitally now know them as you know digital fan subbers but, but in the in the early days uh, we had to do the serial process uh, analogly so and uh, one of the ma- major companies that that, that um, I helped form is called Arctic animation and we did a lot of tiles uh, uh, you know, for animation, uh, Arctic Animation was one of the the, the premier f- fan subbing uh, uh, companies at this particular time. They had fan subbed over a thousand different uh, uh, animes of TV episodes, OVAs, movies, uh, short series, and that kind of stuff. And uh, so again, uh, in this series, I'm going to cover some of the things that we did um, and some of the stories behind some of the the, uh, the animes that we that we uh, covered. Okay, um, I'll do. Uh, Things like uh, Double Zeta, uh, SPT Lazenar, uh, Heavy Metal Elgheim, uh, or a uh, uh, Battler Dunbine. Um, the, of course, one of our first uh, series that we did is Kimigoro Orange Road. Um, Maison Ikaku was the second series that we that worked on. We also did uh, Pat Labor um, is our third series. Uh, then we get into a series of, of a lot of the Magical Girl shows. So that's the Sailor Moon, uh, Miracle Girls, Himichan's Ribbon. Uh, Nurse Angel, all these type of things we did at that in, in the in the second part, and then we did a lot of the Gundams and that kind of stuff uh, as the part of the third part. But again, in this series, uh, we're going to cover all, all, you, know, uh, you know all the different uh, series that we, that we uh, worked on, and uh, yeah, yeah, bring some of the stories, some of the memorabilia back out uh, to show you uh, what, what we had to work with and uh, what we do. Okay. Um, also, I'm going to go cover uh, fan subbing techniques. Okay. A lot of you modern day people are all used to using, you know, computers and uh, and uh, being able to subtitle everything on a, in a digital format. Okay, again, in this era before Windows, um, you know, that wasn't possible. Okay, so you had to do things analog. Um, you had to do things in real time. Okay, and you have to do things in linear. 
fashion okay so I'm gonna go over some of the you know th those definitions and what it means to do analog editing um, as opposed to you know uh, as opposed to digital uh, linear editing on, on like you know VCRs and that kind of stuff as opposed to nonlinear on your computer and that kind of stuff um, you know I'm also gonna touch up on on, 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 a, on a topic which is very important for this is uh, the, the creation of AMVs anime music videos um, and basically how to create uh, how we had to create uh, anime music videos um, in a linear format okay you can't just jump over all, all over the place in your you know, in your um, video editor and uh, you know and clip and, and put and match things like that so again I got an episode uh, designed for that okay I'm also going to talk about uh, the, the the changes in the state of fan subbing uh, and what it means to the rest of the um, uh, anime industry. Again, you know, as time progressed, you know, fan subbing has taken a different um, meaning, a different role, and a different uh, sort of a position in the anime market. Okay, sure. At the beginning, uh, uh, w when anime first started, a lot of fledgling companies. Um, you know, we're looking towards, uh, you know, fan subbing and that kind of stuff to see what the, the, you know, to get a feel of what the animation, you know, market w is, is looking for, what, the, what they like, you know, what's popular, okay? Uh, it's kind of like a, like, like free researching, uh, uh, market research for, uh, for them. But now since, you know, they're, they're, you know, anime is now, you know, you know supplanted itself as a, as a legitimate genre, you know, uh, what has fan subbing now done to the market, and uh, is it uh, negatively impacting it? And in some ways, it uh, you know again, I'll cover that in some episodes. So again, do uh, do stay tuned for and take a look at that things uh, in this series. Okay, um, I'm gonna said uh, as I said earlier, I'm going to be bringing a lot of uh, uh, merchandise, a lot of uh, memorabilia. Okay, uh, again. You know, in this new modern era where everything seems to be more, you know, all consumable, all digital, uh, it gets lost that uh, there is a lot of merchandise and a lot of things that are available for these animes, okay? And, um, and, and uh, you know, that sort of uniqueness of, of, of owning something or having something that was, you know, the, 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 you know some kind of, a, uh, you know, memorabilia type of item uh, is, is kind of significant. So I'm going to bring some of this stuff, uh, you know, back out of archives and uh, show you and uh, maybe I'll unbox it for you and I'll describe to you and show you uh, all the different things that that, that that were available in this uh, you know budding era of, uh, of Japanese animation and some of the things that uh, you know that, that you're able to get at this particular time that maybe you uh, never knew that you could get uh, and uh, and have and, and and basically ever existed okay um, so again, I'm going to go over and I'm going to cover a lot of different things. I, you know, there's a, there's an entire uh, CD set called the Sanmei uh, the CD set out of Taiwan. Um, going to get into basically how that set is and, and some of the misconceptions about that particular set. I'm going to cover in an episode. Uh, you know, remember a lot of people out there collect cards, and so another big era that, that that came out was the collection of things like Pokemon cards and Sailor Moon cards. So again, I, I've got episodes for those as well. I'm going to unbox a whole bunch of these, uh, you know, really uh, rare and, and very some special uh, um, CD box sets. Okay, uh, I'm going to do some uh, some detailed reviews and that kind of stuff for some of the unboxings of some of the uh, some of my favorite um, uh, CDs uh, in those uh, sets. There, so again, I've got episodes for those as well. Um, another th thing that we uh, uh, th that uh, we really depended a lot on was anime magazines. So. Uh, I'm going to spend a few episodes uh, talking about uh, how we, uh, you know, use anime magazines and that kind of stuff, as well as I'm going to unbox a couple of uh, of uh, anime magazines and show you, you know, what it was like to basically, you know, you know, like rip open one of these magazines for the very first time and just kind of how we would pour through those these, these magazines trying to get and gather all this new information about what's going on because again there isn't. Um, a website that you can go to that says, "Oh well, this is what's new is coming out," or or you can't just go to Twitter or Facebook or anything like that and say, "Well, being you know this new anime is coming out and here it is," or that type of thing. No, no, you actually had to you know go out and get a magazine and it'd be just like uh, you know like a TV guide or like a People magazine. You'd, you'd flip through it and all of a sudden it's like, "Wow, this you know th th this, this this new anime is coming out," and it's like, "Oh, okay," and just, you know you you'd be so excited. 
and you can't wait for it to come out. So you're, so you're trying to pour over these magazines, trying to find out you know, every little piece of information. Like, you know, when is it coming out? Is it coming out on LaserDisc? When is it coming? How expensive is it? Um, you know, how long is it going to be? Um, if there's a TV series coming out, uh, you're always wondering, well, how many episodes is it going to be? Uh, you know, are they coming out with one season, two seasons? They're like, you know, uh, you know, does it follow the manga? Does it not? You know, all this type of stuff. You want to find out, and these magazines were the only way you could really find them out. So again, I'm going to go over uh, a couple episodes uh, how we went through these magazines and and how we, uh, you know, extracted and got information from these magazines. Okay, so. Uh, again, this is a part of what we had to do in our in our particular time uh, uh, in this era. Okay, so I invite you to please uh, you know click like and click subscribe. Okay, so this is my invitation for you to come and and watch some of these episodes and learn about basically how anime started uh, from the very beginning. Because again, nowadays uh, we almost take for granted. That we've had anime. I mean, we've seen anime on TV, and uh, you know, we can go to Google and we can go to YouTube and we can go to all these different uh, sites like Crunchyroll and whatnot. And there's anime everywhere. There's there's music videos everywhere. Everyone's reviewing anime and telling you, oh, watch this one, watch this, and and this is pretty cool. This is a good show. And then there's everyone else also going, well, you know, anime now and anime then and and, and all this stuff and 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 whatnot. But Truly, uh, no one's really gone through and said, you know, and, and basically you know, tried to lay it out and try to give you a picture and try to give you examples of what it was like uh, that the, the anime fan from the early days, how they had to get anime, how they had to find anime, how the, you know, what were they trying to do, what were things uh, that were in their way technologically. And um, you know, and things they had to deal with, uh, you know, like the mail system and and tape trading and things like this. You know, this series will get into that. Okay. okay. So without further delay, why don't you go over to the playlist and select some episodes that uh, will interest you? Okay. Um, again, there's going to be a lot of information out there, and so take your time uh, viewing them and uh, really appreciate uh, what some of the uh, pioneers of uh, anime. Uh, has done for your genre uh, that you now enjoy uh, so easily uh, in, in, in this current time, okay? Until next time, see you again.